Hi, today we are going to talk about um, evolution. Um, so we're going to start with Darwin, variation, adaptations, natural selection, and artificial selection. Okay, so let's start with Darwin. So Charles Darwin, he lived from 1809 to 1882. And he was a famous scientist from England. Here's an image of Darwin. Looks younger in this picture. Okay, um, and he was a naturalist. So he is a type of scientist, but specifically he was a naturalist. He studied plants and animals in their natural environment. So he focused on making observations rather than performing experiments. When you normally think of a scientist, you think of them performing experiments in a lab maybe. Um, but a naturalist is another type of scientist, and that's what he did. Okay, um, when he was 22, he went on a scientific voyage on a ship called the Beagle. Um, and on this ship, he worked as a naturalist, and he observed and collected samples of plants, animals, fossils, and rocks when the ship landed at different places around the world. So, uh, talk about his journey on that ship. So, this is a map of the world. This is a map of um, his trip and all the stops that he made on his ship. And so, started this way for Sydney, Australia, and then he went up along this way. Um, and this is North America here, so we live around this area here, and then this is South America. Um, so this was a five-year journey, a five-year trip around the world. And during this journey, he visited tropical rainforests, he experienced an earthquake. Um, he dug up fossils of animals that were extinct or animals that were no longer found living on the earth. Um, and some of his greatest discoveries he found here in the Galapagos Islands. So there are a little chain of islands off of the coast of Ecuador, which is in South America, right around here. So we're going to talk about that now a little bit. So, the Galapagos Islands. So here's a closer image of the islands. There's about five larger islands and then some smaller ones around. Um, and then these, each of these islands, they, he found that they differed from one another. So some of the islands were drier, maybe more like deserts. Um, some were rocky. Um, and some got more rainfall, so they were more, more moist or wetter than other ones. And another thing he observed, which is what he's famous for mostly, is that the animals on one of the islands were different from the animals on another island. So, for example, these are um, Darwin's finches. So he observed these birds called finches. Um, and he observed that they were different. So there was different finches on different islands, but although they were the same species, he thought they're all the same bird, but they looked different. He looked at their beaks. So you can see here, this is like the original beak of a finch. But he noticed that depending on which island they were on and which food they ate, that their beaks looked differently. So for example, these beaks here, this is a beak of a bird that eats seeds. So this beak looks similar to that original one. Um, and this one eats fruit, it's a vegetarian tree finch, so it eats buds and fruit. So that one's similar as well, it looks a little bit different from the original one. You can see little arches here. Um, and this one, for example, eats leaves, so this beak is a little bit more pointy, so it's different from these two. Um, and this bird eats insects. It's a small tree finch, and it looks like here you can see it's a little pointy as well. And 
That may be because it has to grab the insects. So that type of beak would help this bird in particular because it eats insects. Um, whereas the bird that eats fruit probably doesn't need a beak like this. Um, and then this beak as well, it says it eats grubs, so it's really pointy and straight and probably that's probably so it can get into trees and reach the birds, so it needs a longer or the grubs and the insects that it eats, so it needs a longer beak so it can do that. Um, and then this one right here is a tool using finch. So he uses a tool, so he has a beak that can help him hold this little tool here. It's probably like a branch from a tree, but he can use that to stick it in a tree and in a little hole, maybe in the ground or in a tree, and get bugs out to eat. So those are that's one example of um, of variations that he saw in birds. And there was other things he saw. He also looked at turtles and many different animals that he observed that had these different variations depending on where they lived, which island they lived in, and what their environment was like. So those are some of his great observations. Okay, um, now we're going to talk about the theory of evolution. So this is what he came up with. This is what his work, his life's work was about, basically. Um, so here is actually an image of his actual sketches that he made in one of his books. Um, and here you can see there's like a little tree. So this is where he kind of was sketching how these birds were still related, but they were different. They kind of split into different species. So they still have, they're related, they have a common ancestor, but they split over many generations. Okay, so he developed the theory of evolution, and there was two main ideas in his theory. Um, so one is that organisms change over time. So this is what is evolution. It's called evolution. Organisms change over time. And his second main idea was that evolution occurs by natural selection. So natural selection is something we're going to talk about a little later. But that's how evolution, or the, how the change comes about, is through natural selection.